Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? This is Stiletto coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Well, I see my co-host is coming over here to join me, Juno. Yes, my co-host. Today we got an unboxing for you today. I think it's going to be a fun one, too. It's going to be a fun one. It's one of my favorite knives I decided to get. I just had to get it when I saw it. And it's going to be one of my, my new outdoor folders. But anyway, let's get into it. During the unboxing days, the knife that I carried to work. Now there goes Juno. Yes, my sweetie. Gotta get down, kiddo, so we can do the unboxing. You, got, you can't do the unboxing if you're on the table. Mm-hmm. Yes, my sweetie. Yes, my sweetie. All right, come over here, kiddo. Come on. Come on. That's my girl. Yes, my girl. All right. Yes, my sweetie. Hmm? That's right. That's my sweetie. That's my sweetie. Okay, let's do the unboxing. And this one's coming from the Knife Center. The Knife Center. The Knife Center. One of my favorite stores. The Knife Center. I think Midway and the Knife Center and probably uh, Smoky Mountain Knives. All right, here we go. Oh, doing the unboxing day is my favorite uh, AD model. One of my favorites. I like to carry anyway. This is one I like to carry. AD10. Absolutely love it. Oh, by the way, I polished I polished the, um, the backspacer. The aluminum backspacer, I polished it. Let you guys check it out. I think this is the first time I've shown it since I've done it. Absolutely love it. All right, let's get busy. Oh, we got some goodies. Got a fire. Got fire steel and a, and a scraper. Awesome. What else we got in here? Hmm, cold steel, 62 RQ, ORSW, 4 Max, 4 Max Scout, knife, 4 inch Oz 10A, AUS 10A. Stone wash blade, orange, yes, yes, Cheetos orange, Cheetos, or Cheetos orange, orange Grivex handles, awesome, $84.95, stainless steel, and a stainless steel survival card, and a magnesium fire starter steel, and serrated striker, so the survival card was for free, okay, oh, I know about, about the, um, the, the magnesium fire steel because they had a $95 free shipping thing. You had, if you, had, you had to purchase $95 worth of products to get free shipping. And so I got the fire starter for that. And then I got the striker for free. I mean, the, the other part thing, thing for free. Let's see what this looks like. There it is right there. Set this out of the way. Oh, sweet, like a little multi-tool. It's even got, oh, that's sharp. It's got a blade. And something you can measure with. This feels like a saw. And it's got a thing to remove bolt heads, bottle opener. I wonder what this is for. I wonder if it's supposed to be some way you can make a compass or something. Hey, this is very cool. Got a little pry bar, that little pry bar part right here. That's what I got for free. Very cool with my order.
I've been trying to purchase off of um, the Knife Center because I want to get ready to get the uh, Mayhem. The Mayhem's on pre-order right now at Knife Center. They say it should be coming towards the end of the season, whatever that means. Let's put, that, put this out the way. And that's what I paid 11 bucks for, just to make this be $96 or $95, so I get free shipping. Might as well. And here's the new knife. All right. Got the cold steel um, warranty, question mark. <laughs> A little sarcastic humor there, if y'all know what I mean. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted. Look at that, people. You all know I love orange knives. This is gonna be my outdoor folder. I saw I saw um, a video today where um, I'm not gonna mention any names or where I, where it came from. I saw a video today where they were talking about if you're dropped off in a desert, they meant deserted island a deserted tropical island what knives would you want and they had like several fixed blades and then they said for four inch they, they picked a um ontario liner lock four inch knife and i thought to myself why would you want that i mean because he had to pick between um zero and two hundred dollars and they picked the ontario folder i thought to myself why would you want that i wouldn't want that I wouldn't want that if I'm trying to have a survival knife that's at a four inch blade. I want the four max. Give me the four max scout. This is the one I would want. I'd want this one. Okay, sweetie, you gotta come down, sweetie. You gotta come down. Yes, my girl. Yes, my girl. You gotta come on down, kiddo. I thought to myself, I would want the four max. I wouldn't even want that. I'd rather have one of these, an 8010 over that. But this one right here, oh man. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, it feels good too. Perfectly centered. This is my first GSM 4 Max. All my other 4 Maxes are from the original company. This is the first GSM one. So let's bring out let's bring out one of my my other old favorite one that that goes in my uh, bag with me to work every day. Let's compare them. They look exactly the same, though. Only difference is the colors of the handles. Now, remember, this one was a black one that swapped the handles and the backspacer from a DLT trading knife to make this one. Because I was trying to make an all-black DLT trading knife. Yeah, they're exactly the same. I don't think there's any difference. The fitment's even the same. Because the, the, the lock bar in this one sits a little bit proud of the handle skit of the handle line of the, the, the liners, the stainless steel liners, and so does this one. So I think they're made exactly in the same factory, exactly exactly the same place. The grinds are identical. The way that they mark four max on four max scout, that's identical. The only thing that's different is this labeling, the new uh, cold steel labeling. This one I paid over $100 for, though. It was like $105 or something like that. This one was $84. And that's the, I think that's the regular price for them at uh, the Knife Center, $84. But yeah, I got I got some points now. Now I'm now I'm up to like a $20 uh, discount. I want to get up to the $50 discount so I get the, the uh, $50 off the Mayhem when that one comes out. Because I'm going to get it on pre-order. Go ahead and get it on pre-order. Absolutely love it, people. The other one I got to bring into this picture, though. Now, all these are Andrew Demko designs. Just to let you all know, 
These are all Am Andrew Demko knives. I think these are the four ones I would want if I was dropped off in the middle of nowhere with like a four inch blade. Well, this one's like a little bit longer than a three and a half, like a 3.6 or seven inch blade or something like that. This one's a four, four inch blade and these are four inch blades. But I'd, I'd, these would be my choices. I'd pick, I'd pick the four max number one. Four max would be number one. Number two would be the SR1. Number three would be like an 8010. Then after 8010, it'd be like a Voyager. They feel exactly the same. Let's see if they're way the same. That's how you can really tell if they're exactly the same. Ten ounces, ten point oh. Ten ounces, ten point oh. They're exactly the same, people. They're exactly the same. This one, seven point three ounces. Now this is the this is the higher end model. They also make a. Um, SR1 light, and I have a couple of those, but those are all put away. This is the one that stays out, because I carry this one sometimes. And then this is my 8010 that stays out. 7.1 ounces. How much was this again? 7.3, 7.1. Wow, so these two are really close in weight. Blade thicknesses. I think they're supposed to be, these are supposed to be 4.8 or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Let's find out. Hope everybody had a great day today. I had to work this weekend. I'm working tomorrow too. And I'll be working next weekend also. So I have two seven, two seven day weeks in a row. Okay, we're all zeroed out. Right here at the base of the 4.77. Yeah, so it is like a 4.8 millimeter. 4.77. They're exactly the same, people. All right, let me show you guys. Now it says 4.73 or 4. Four and three quarters. 4.75 millimeter, let's call it that. This one says 4.74. 4.74. And this one I think is a 3.8. 3.82. These are all the ones I think are the toughest knives that um, out of all the cold steel folders, I would say these are the, these are the tough ones. These are the muscle bound ones. These are the Arnold Schwarzeneggers. <laughs> I don't know all the bodybuilders. I'm just, I just know a couple. <laughs> but uh, but uh, these, these, are, these, are, these are like the big heavyweight ones. And these would be the more lightweight bodybuilders or mid middleweight bodybuilders, light heavyweight. We'll call them light heavyweights, but these are the heavyweights. And if I was dropped off into a deserted, deserted island, I would want one of these. Because if I had to you know, pick a folder over a fixed blade, because these are almost like a fixed blade. I'm not going to call them a fixed blade, you know, but everybody knows how strong these things are. But they're heavy enough to be a chopper, too, and you got a good rear grip. So you can actually do some chopping. The balancing point is it's a little bit blade heavy because if I tilt my hand down a little bit, it'll, it'll, it'll drop. So they're just a touch blade heavy, which makes them a good chopper though. See, this one's the same balancing point. Yep. This one's balanced perfect. That's balanced perfect. See, I can balance my hand up and down and it sits on my finger, it doesn't go anywhere. This one's balanced perfect too. When they're balanced like this, they make, the, they, they make great fighters because the balance in your hand is just right. 
I love this knife. This is one of my favorites. But I love these too. These go on, these go on my um, ammo bag and my, and my bug out bag. I'm gonna put one in each one. That's what I got them for. I really like this one though, because this one's a great one for outdoors, I think. And the reason why is because it's got the bright orange handle. If you drop it somewhere, it'd be easy to find out in the forest or in, in, a, in a... Whereas this one, you might lose it because of the green. <laughs> the OD green. These are beautiful knives, people. Absolutely love them. I love the matching color backspacers too. I highly recommend these. And you all know that I'm not a big fan of Grivery or GrivX as Cold Steel calls it, calls it. But the Grivery on these feels like G10. I think it's a very high quality Grivery on these. And I don't mind it. And I love Oz 10, AUS, Japanese AUS 10A. To me, it's like a VG10 or, or 154CM. You know, it's, it's like one of those grades of steels. I would say I, I like it better over the, than the 12 C, the was a, um, the 14 C, 28 N, or something like that. I, I don't know the the Swedish Amvic steel. I rather have this steel. I like this. See how sharp it is. The new knife. Oh, that's razor people. This razor, razor, let's go all the way to the tip. Look at that. It's razor, people. Perfect. The one I've had for a while, I've had this one for a couple of years now. Still sharp. I've never sharpened it either. I've used it and never have sharpened it. I think I've stropped it before, though. This one. This is S35VN. And you all know that I, I baton with this one in, the, in one of the last videos. Let's see how I'll, I'll sharp the, 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 the tip part is. Kind of hard to do. It's not as sharp as the main part of the blade. Let's see how sharp this one is. This one I baton with too. Well, even the tip on this one's sharp. I would expect this one to be sharper and cut better because it's a hollow grain. All these other ones are flat are, are saber flat ground blades. This is a saber hollow ground blade with a with a flat ground tip. Perfect. This was the one that carved the best. Just out of curiosity, speaking of carving, let's get a piece of wood out. Let's make a mess. <laughs> we know these two, we've seen these two do the carving in the last video I made. We, when I, they did some batoning and wood carving. But I didn't get a chance to do it with this one because I forgot to put this one in the video too. So let's try it out. Trying to get the edge right on the edge. It makes little fine feathers. Okay. Well, that one's cutting too deep. All right, these feathers stick nice. Compare it to this one. This one did the best job of all the knives I had. Not doing the best job right now though. I think the Formax is doing a better job. There we go. SR1.
Okay, the episode one's doing a better job this time. Maybe it's just a piece of wood. Okay. Y'all can see the feathering. Very cool. Very cool. Let me get another. Just out of curiosity. I don't know if I'll be able to get this all in the picture, in the frame. I'm filming with my um, cell phone because my uh, camera is sort of like, the battery in it I think is, is starting to be no good. I just want to see. Oh, that felt good. That felt good, people. This one looks like it's got some knocks in it. Yeah, I'll probably go a little bit further. Yeah, I can do it. That's enough mess. Making a mess. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I would pick the 4Max people. If I was going to pick a survival folder, a folder that I was going to have for survival purpose, it would definitely have to be the 4Max for me. The 4Max. Then after that, it'd be the SR1. I think the SR1 stands for Survival Rescue or something like that. And these are all Andrew Dimko knives. And, you know, the, main, main, the way Andrew Dimko likes to make knives, you know, super strong. These, model, these models are made after his custom models. These three right here. These are made after his custom models, and this was one that he, he made and made with uh, probably with Lindsey Thompson, because him and Lindsey Thompson used to design the knives together. All the ones that weren't his his custom models that he brought to Cold Steel and let Cold Steel manufacture them. But they say they're going to come out with a a, a, four, a five inch four uh, five max, not a four max, but a, a five max, which is going to be like this, but an inch longer. You know, I'll be all over that one. I would be all over that one. I would have to have that one. Especially if they, if they make a 5 Max Scout. Ooh, yeah. I like these better than the, um, to tell you the truth, I sort of like these better than the, the more expensive versions. Why? Because they don't cost so much where I'm not afraid to beat on them. The more expensive ones are like, you know, like, imagine a 5 Max is going to be like, probably, they're going to probably want those $500 for four or four or $500 for that. Because uh, from Cold Steel with the 4 Max, it went almost three to $400 for it. And you can catch them, you know, the street price. I, I think at Midway, they're asking like $239 for the, the new 4 Max. The one that I don't have, the one that's made in, in Taiwan. I had, I had the original one made in USA and the, and the one made in Italy, but I never got the one made in Taiwan. Now, I, I would like to have that one. I'll probably get one eventually, you know, if, if I ever see the price come way down. In the you know one to two hundred dollar range, I'll probably get one then, if I have the funds and you know I'm in the position to be buying something like that. But because I I, I want to have all of them, I want to have I, I love the and the scouts are the ones I use. I have another I have another one that's all blacked out that I made all blacked out. And that one I don't use. I thought I was going to use it, but I ended up liking to use this one. And I have another one that. Um, just a regular stock one, uh, the black one. Or maybe I don't. I can't remember if I do or not. Maybe that's what this one was. But I got the orange one. I got the orange one now. This one to me is the one that's really the outdoor one. The, out, the one that for outdoor. The, the OD green one reminds me of the military. 
Whenever you're, you know, because uh, olive drab, you know, that's like the, I was in the military, when I first went in, they didn't have cami, cami uniforms. They had um, cotton uniforms that were um, OD green. And then they came out with the permanent press uniforms that were OD green. And after that, in the 80s, they came out with the camis. And it was the forest camis, not the desert camis that we had. I was stationed in Germany and we were always trained to fight Russia. That was our purpose. Our job was to go to folder gaps at landmines and fight the Russians as they came over from Poland. That was our job. I'm glad it never happened. Our life expectancy was like five minutes <laughs> once the Russians came and confronted us. Because at that time, Russia had some serious tanks and they had like serious weaponry. And that's why I went into the Pathfinders because Pathfinders, their job was to do recon, go out and, uh, and uh, count the tanks and soldiers and everything like that, but not engage and bring back the information back to your main unit and let them know what they were up against. And the life expectancy of the Pathfinder was much longer than the, than the regular foot soldier. <laughs> and Pathfinders were trained by special forces. We went to Bad Tolls, Germany for training for that. But I absolutely love these. Absolutely love these. I think this is probably, when it comes to heavy duty folders, to me, this is number one. I can't think of any other knife in between 100, I mean, in between zero and $200. That was a, That's what you had to pick. Zero, zero dollars and two hundred dollars. I would rather have more than this one, if I if I'm trying to be in a survival type situation or anything like that. That'd be the that'd, that'd be my number one choice. I can't think of anything that's tougher, stronger, or better. Then you know, and the only only knife that's tougher, stronger, or better to me than this one would be the would be the um, the higher end one, the one with the G10 handles and 20 CV blade and titanium backspacer and liners. That's the only one that would be better because there's no other knife in the world that I think is a folding knife anyway. I think is stronger than the than a four max. And if they come out with the five max, like I said, I'm gonna be all over that. And I don't think I don't think there's any other knife in the world other than the four max that's stronger than SR one. And same thing goes for this one. There's I don't think there's any other three and a half inch blade or three point seven whatever it is blade that's stronger than this one. Than the AD10. These are these are some these are some heavy duty strong knives. If you want a knife that is basically a folding fixed blade, okay, I'm just gonna say it. Just basically a folding fixed blade. These are your these are your best choices right here. That's what you see on this table. These are your best choices. I don't have the I don't have the higher end one of my higher end ones out, but to me these are just as good because instead of titanium liners, these have full steel liners. And if you all know anything about steel and titanium, the difference is steel has a higher tensile strength than, than titanium does. Titanium is like the strongest non, I guess it's non-magnetic steel that you can get. And after that would be like 70, 75 aircraft grade T6 aluminum. And then after that would be 60, 61 T6 grade aircraft grade aluminum. And that's what this one has. This one has alum, the, the 60, 60, I mean, 60, 61, T6 grade aluminum, aluminum liners, full liners with G10 handle scales and S35 VM blade. This one has um, stainless steel liners that encapsulate the, the pivot and the lock. Those are the parts that you have to, that you have to um, if you want to make your knife super strong, those are the parts that you have to uh, encapsulate. It's, you know, according to what I've seen from Andrew Demko, because all the knives that he makes to be really strong, he always he always does this. Like the the eighty, the eighty twenties and eighty twenty s models, they're made more like this one, with where the where they have a a, um, a titanium liner that encapsulates the the pivot and the and the uh, and the locking mechanism or the shark lock. The Espada, the Espada series folders, they have a a, reinfor a stainless steel partial liner that encapsulates just the triad lock, but not the um, pivot. And that used to be the strongest knife. I think the XL held up to like 700, they tested up to 750 pounds. And this is the one that they put up against the deadbolt, it beat the deadbolt. It wasn't this one, it was the um, light model, the budget model. 
and uh, they put that up against a deadbolt and deadbolt filled at like 598 pounds and this they, this, they, this one never the, and this one never filled but I think they went up to like 625 or 650 pounds on it this one's a super strong too knife too Andrew Dimko says that he thinks that the 8010 is one of the strongest knives he's ever made ever designed so these are the super strong these are these are the muscle bound muscle muscle bound blades out of the out of the um, cold steel lineup if you ask me I know people always want to know what what I think is the strongest knives. These are the strongest knives that Cold Steel's ever made. Also, the you know the Espada line is a very strong line too. The Espadas. Basically, anything that you see with a um, a partial stainless steel liner or a, um, a sixty sixty one liner. Now the other ones that have sixty sixty one liners are the um, are the Voyagers and. I know the um, the small Raja as a as a aluminum liners as a sixty sixty one aluminum liners. I think the 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 big Raja though has stainless steel liners, stainless steel liners, and also the um, the one that's uh, it's got the Copus Copus style blade and handle. My mind's going blank, people. Lindsey Thompson special, the Spartan, the Spartan. The Spartan has steel liners, the but the new one, the new one, the, the Lindsay Thompson one, it just has a thick stain, a thick G10 handle scales. But probably the stronger one, uh, those uh, those would probably be the less expensive one with the rivery handles and the steel liners. But those are these those are the strong blades from Cold Steel. If you want something that has uh, super super duper strength, that you know is probably comparable to like a fixed blade. I would pick one of these or or one of the Voyagers or one of the Spartans with the steel liners or the Rajas with the either the aluminum liners or the steel liners and the Spada with the partial with the partial um, stainless steel liners. Those are all the strongest knives I think that Cold Steel has made. Oh, I'm, I'm leaving out the Counterpoint. Counterpoint has 6061 full 6061 aluminum liners with the with the 6061 aluminum backspacer. So the counterpoint's another one of them. I'm sorry about that, people. Both the both the the, the large size counterpoint and the extra large counterpoint. I think even the smallest counterpoint that they made has you know liners like that too. So Cold Steel's made a lot of real, very, really strong knives, and even the ones that have just G10 scales, those are strong too. But they're not strong like these though. They're not strong like these. I think the most weight I've ever seen the the Voyager hold was like 450 pounds. And I've seen like the the um, the recons and all the other ones, like the like the um, towel wars and stuff like that. They were like I've I never seen them go past I don't think three hundred fifty pounds. I never seen them fail though. They just stop. They, they, whatever they were competing. They, oh no, wait a minute. The the towel war, the, the small towel war went over four hundred pounds. So I think it beat out the um, bedlam, the benchmade bedlam, and I think that one fell like it. 398 pounds. That's the, that was a strong axis lock. But the bad thing about the axis lock though is if you hit the pommel, the, the lock can bounce down and the blade can fold. And the way that the Benchmade makes their knives, they don't make their knives like this where if they fold, you don't get cut. The Benchmade knife, the blade, you know, the edge starts back here and it, it just straight goes and cuts you. The knife that I got cut up really bad by was a Benchmade a AFCK. Back in the day, I, I still love the Benchmades though, but they're not the safest knives. If the if the lock gives out, that is. But the Axis Lock is extremely strong if you don't hit the butt in butt handle of it and knock the knock the um, lock down. And the way that the um, Atlas Lock is made, I think it could do that too. I've never tried to do it, but it doesn't have anything that because because the way the the way the lock works, it just goes straight back. Whereas like the, the shark lock, you have to lift up the lock and pull it back. So I think Andrew Demko did that on purpose to put like a safety feature inside the lock, the way, the way it was constructed. And that's the difference between a shark lock and an Atlas lock. So that's one reason why I think the shark lock is probably safer than the Atlas lock. The Atlas lock is more like a, um, it's not made like the um, Axis lock, 
but it sort of works in the same way where the where it slides straight back. You don't lift it up or anything. It just slides straight back, and it works off a spring. So you know if you make that if you make the if you make the lock bar bounce, then the then the blade can come unlocked. And the way that you would make the lock bar bounce is by hitting it on the butt end of the, of the handle really hard, and then the, the blade. I bet you the blade would probably fold. But on that one though, on the Atlas lock knives, so one thing that's good about them though is that you can fold them halfway without cutting yourself. So if you're holding the Atlas lock knife like this and you hit the butt end of it really hard and the blade was to fold in on you, it wouldn't cut you probably. Not if you're holding it right. If you're holding it down like this and you hit it, yeah, it would cut you. Because then it would come down on you and then be it guillotine your fingers. <laughs> but these knives, these knives are super safe. You know, the, the triad lock to me is the best lock out of all locks. If you really want just a strong knife with a strong lock, there's nothing better than an Atlas lock. That's my opinion. Not Atlas lock, I mean a triad lock. There's nothing better than a triad lock. And I think probably the next strongest lock I've never seen it tested though, but I think it might be the, might be a shark lock. It'd either be the shark lock or the dead or the deadbolt. The only thing I don't like about the deadbolt it doesn't self adjust. As it gets worn, you'll get a little bit of up and down blade play because the the two prongs that hold the blade they're made out of softer metal than the blade tank, and they wear down. It doesn't it doesn't like sink in deeper or anything. It just wears down, and you get. A little up and down blade play. That's what happened to me on my um my clever girl, the one that I liked a lot. And I kept that carried a whole lot. And I fidgeted with it a whole lot. And I eventually wore it down to the point where it got up and down blade play. But the app but the but the um the shark lock, I play with that one more than any other knife that I've had so far. And it locks up solid. No side to side, no up and down, no nothing. I think, but you know, I wouldn't use it for like, um, like uh, Gideon's tackle did with the Atlas lock, uh, and the, and the, he he, t he tested both of them, the Atlas lock and the um, Shark lock. The Shark lock held up when he did, did the batoning, the wood, and all that kind of stuff, and wood crafting. The, the Shark lock held up, but the um, the Atlas lock developed um, a lot of blade play. And you know, with all those little tiny parts and stuff like that, I think it's best not to baton a knife like that. Let it be just a pocket knife, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I think I think either the Atlas lock or or um, or the shark shark lock. I think they're very safe locks. I think the at, the the um, Atlas lock is probably safer lock than the Axis lock. And on the weight hang, it can handle a whole lot of weight. On just hanging dead weight. So I don't know. But when it comes to the king of the locks, if you want, if you want a super strong work knife, if you want a super strong knife that can be used for survival and everything else, nothing's going to beat one of these. You know, a, a triad lock. That's my personal opinion, people. There's all kinds of knives I love, you know, and I absolutely enjoy having and stuff like that. I enjoy plunge locks. I enjoy. Um, I even enjoy, you know, my my um, my frame lock knives. I have that I really like. Frame locks, plunge locks. I even have some liner lock knives, but I don't think the plunge lock, liner lock, or frame lock is a lock that I really put a whole lot of trust into. I know that might I know that might rub a lot of people the wrong way, but I got I got messed up by a by a liner lock knife. And liner lock knife is basically like a frame lock, only it's thinner materials. A frame lock is just a thicker liner lock, really, in all reality. Which makes it, you know, stronger than that, you know, just an average liner lock. But I would, I don't, I don't put too much faith in that. Where I'd be just doing doing any kind of thing with it. I wouldn't use one of those kind of knives for um, batoning or anything like that unless I really had to. I'm not afraid to baton with one of these because I, I know the triad lock self adjusts and it can handle it. So and, and you know, like, these can handle not only weight hanging, but they can handle. You know, spine whacking and, and, uh, and, you know, we've seen all the tests on them, you know, the Andrew Emco test. 
and how they compared did compared to other knives. The only knives that, that they've really been able to hang with it are the um, the deadbolt and the axis lock. But the axis lock wasn't that good at spine whacking and stuff. And like I said, if you hit the the bot the base of it, you know that, that can cause them to fail too. So a lot of those video, old videos, you know, Andrew Demko would test two competitors' knives. He'd use one for the spine whacking because a lot of times they wouldn't pass the spine whacking test or whatever. And, uh, and then he'd switch over and use another one for uh, for the weight hang. And, it, and he would use, and he, and he would often use knives that he used in previous videos for other tests for triad locks to go up against fresh knives. <laughs> That, the, the triad lock is just a badass lock. I'm sorry, it is. I've heard people say that, you know, Andrew Demko's not a genius for coming up with that idea, but you know what I mean? But uh, that the liner lock is a, you know, is an improvement over the, the copper lock that was invented what, back in, I don't know, the 1940s, the 60s or something. And, they, and that was an improvement over that, you know, so everything's always an improvement or, you know, a, a evolvement of something else. And there's a long period of time when, when there was back locks. I think, I think uh, Buck Knives was the one that invented the back lock back in 1963 or something. And there was a long period of time before they came out with the, with, before they came out with the triad. Think about that. And Andrew Denko was the one that came up with the idea. How come nobody else did? Because they weren't geniuses when it comes to locks. <laughs> Andrew Demko to me is like, I don't know, he's a master lock maker. I mean, the shark lock is awesome. I don't really care for the scorpion lock all that much. You know, I don't like, you know, the way it operates and stuff. I, I, I do have a collection of about four of them, but uh, it's not my favorite folder. I'd rather have, a, I'd rather have a, a, a triad lock over a scorpion lock. You know, even the fidget with, I, I like these better. And um, that the, the the shark lock to me is the best fidgeting lock that there is. It's the easiest to use. It's the easiest to manipulate, and they just function so well. And they, and they hold their own. The, you know, the, the blades don't come loose or anything like that. You know, once you take them apart, you know, give them a tune and lube, and put a little bit of blue Loctite on the on the on, on the pivot screw, and put it all together, and let it sit for a couple of days, and then you go use it. It won't ever come undone. That's the way those are. They're excellent knives. You know, that whether you get the 8020.5 or the 8020S or the 8020. Or now that I think they have an 8022 or something like that too. They're, com they're coming out with another one too. But uh, excellent knives, people. Absolutely love these. Let's get another look. You know, matter of fact, I'm gonna take this one apart. I'm going to tune and lube it. Let's do that real quick. I know the video's getting long. You don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. Stop watching whenever you want to. That's cool with me. Give it a quick tune and loop. This is gonna be a user. It's not. It's not going into. It's going into one of my um, bags. I don't know. It's going into my bug out bag. Probably, I'll probably put it in a bug out bag. And that one will stay in the in the my weapons in my weapons bag. I need to put one of my fixed blades into my bug out bag bag too. Right now I'm using my big Voyagers. And it's the first time you take these apart, they're always hard to get apart. I need to pry it a little bit. Using old chopsticks. That's what I use the pry with. Cause you don't want to scar anything.
And I always like to do, do these with the, the blade outside the um, liners. There we go. Everything's on there. You got the tight, got the um, the bronze phosphor washer. And you got the nylon washer. I forget the Teflon, Teflon washer. You guys can see the inside. Now, a way to make these lighter is to lighten up the scales by, you know, putting drills, drill some holes or something in them. I bet you that would make a lot lighter, bringing under 10 ounces. But I like this one being heavy duty. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have a problem with it being heavy duty. See what the blade looks like, the blade tang? It's a tank of a blade. Lube up the washers. Put this back in here. The flat goes to the front. I like to put a little bit of lube on the pivot, the pivot itself, the pivot pin, the part that the blade rides on. Put some grease on the the washer and the Teflon washer also. And you go ahead and put the blade back on. A little drop of oil. Got to put the blade on, depress it. Look all that space it's got right there to, to self-adjust. Little drop of oil right here. Always oh, a Teflon washer goes against the blade. I always like to make sure I don't have any grease in where the threads are. Just go ahead and put it back together. That's a tune loop. Let's put a little bit of drop of oil right here too. Now when, when you start to get that little like a little clicking noise, like when you shake it like this, take a little bit of um, rubber cement and there'll be these pin, this pin right here and this pin right here are the ones that make the noise. That's really common on the models that don't have a steel liner. But the, the ones with the steel liners eventually do it too. Back together. Depress the blade, release it a little bit. All right. I like to put a little bit of blue Loctite. No, you need a little bit, you don't need a lot. I like to screw it in and screw it out, get that Loctite spread around all in the threads before I tighten it up. And tighten it all the way down. Now unscrew it all, almost all the way up. I'm just spreading out the Loctite, that's what I'm doing. And tighten it all the way back down again, and then back it off a quarter of a turn. And just go ahead and re reassemble everything else. 
You'll need to take apart the, the um, side with the clip on it. Oh, wait a minute. Ooh, I'm messing up, huh? I'm forgetting something, people. I'm trying to rush too fast. Let's wipe this off now. Gotta have the steel liner in there. Press it. Okay, now we're ready. This is live. This is live, people. You see things live with me. I don't edit or cut anything out. All the way down. Back it off a quarter of a turn. Then you go ahead and put the rest of it together. Like I say, you don't need to take apart the um, the other side if you don't want to. That's not really necessary. I sort of don't like to disturb the pins on the other side because once you do that, that's when you do get that, that little ticky sound sometimes. Because once you take them out, it's not like they're pressed in no more. I think it creates a little bit of just enough looseness in the in the in the pins where that they'll move around a little bit. So I always just try to take apart one side. I don't take it all the way apart. You don't need to take it all the way apart. Unless you just want to see how everything puts together or whatever, but you don't really need to do that. Not to service it like you like you just saw, saw me do. Now, if you're, if you're changing the handle skills, that's when you would take it all the way apart. Just go finger tight. That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. And that should be it. Perfectly centered. Excellent. That's all you gotta do, people. That's how easy it is to take care of these. A triad lock is also very easy to maintain, take care of. As, as you guys can see, I always save, save my old chopsticks. When I get Chinese food, the wooden chopsticks they always give me. Because <laughs> they're, they're good, they make awesome pry tools. They won't damage your knife. You don't wanna use that something that's anything that's metal. Because you put metal to metal, it'll damage it. It'll scrape it. No side to side, no up and down. You also want to check it in the folded position. And no movement in the folded position. And these are some of the smoothest knives, too. The way I, I don't know what it is. It's just that I think I think they when they making when they're making these in the factories, it's one of the knives that they they've really got right. You know, like the the triad the triad um, towel wars so far were the only ones that that weren't right. But every other every other knife I've gotten from Cold Steel, the new Cold Steel company, have been perfect. They had triad locks. All, all the um, Voyagers that I have, I have two new Voyagers, no, one new Voyager, the um, the Barong Blade Voyager, that one's perfect. This one's perfect. That one's a new one. And these two are old knives from the old Cold Steel Company. I'm trying to think of the other, I, I got several of them, I can't just think of, think of all of them right now. Oh, my new spot is perfect. And, and another thing too, the Spada is a great deal. The 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 largest Spada, because you can get those like 125 to like 135 dollars. The five and a half inch um, Japanese Oz Tim blade. Those are excellent knives. Those are excellent knives for you know folding fighting knives or hunting knives or what have you. 
And these like to be played with. The more you play with them, you break them in, you get that, get all the oil in it and grease and everything spread all out in them. And they just get smoother and smoother. Absolutely love it, people. All these knives have baton now. <laughs> and they've all made feather sticks. And this one feels a little bit, let me loosen this one up a little bit. It feels a little bit too tight. There you go, that's about right. There you go. And on these, they have the, the nice thumb studs where they're like pretty equal on each side. On all these, on all the heavy duty ones. They all got like the same thumb, stud, thumb studs. Whereas like on the um, Recon series and a lot of the other series, that's like big on one side and small on one on the, on the, on the, like the left hand side for lefties. So if you're a lefty, you might want to swap the, the thumb studs around. But this one, these, you don't have to do that. But I like these thumb studs the best. I like the bigger thumb stud. If you have a thumb stud knife, you know, have thumb stubs on it that, you know, they're easy to use. That's my point of view. Excellent knives. Excellent. All these are easy to use. This one's real easy. It's real easy because it's lighter. You know, the blade's lighter, that the, everything's lighter. It's a little bit more compact. By being a little bit more compact, you know, your fingers don't have to stretch out as far to, to manipulate things. It makes it a little bit easier. I don't know if you can notice how much easier it is for me. New one again. Let's go reverse. See, so you see, see the difference. This one's easy to manipulate too, though. But you got, you got to see that I'm stretching out my fingers to get to everything because everything's further away. But when you depress the the lock bar on these, on both of these, I don't know, you don't feel any friction or anything. There's like no lock stick or nothing at all. So I don't know if they finished the, um, we should have looked at it when I had it apart, huh? Look at the lock bars. I think they did a little bit better job on these. That's what I think. On the four maxes. This one, you feel a little tiny bit of lock stick. This one's been used so much, it's probably worn down. Yeah, that's not a good example. But when, when these are new, you feel a little bit of lock stick. This one you don't anymore because I use this one all the time. This is a knife that I carry a lot. It went to work with me today. I love the, I love the way the polished backspacer came out. I'm tempted to see if the um, Atlas lock has the same type of backspacer. I, I can't tell if it's aluminum or if it's like a, like a um, G10 or something. The way I always tell, tell is I take it apart and then I'll scrape on the inside, see if it'll scrape, you know, like on the part where you don't see if it's all put together. Scrape, try to give a little scratch or scrape and see if, it, if, if there's aluminum underneath it. Because sometimes they're kind of hard to tell. And if it's aluminum, I'm going to polish it. I think I'll polish that one too. I like the Atlas Lock knives. It's just that I don't trust them for, um, like, but I wouldn't try to baton with them or do anything like that. You're okay for wood grafting. Well, as a matter of fact, the, the Atlas Lock, the, um, my Engage, that was the one that was the best at feather sticking. I forgot that. That was the one that was the best for fe feather sticking, I think. 
if I remember right now, now that I'm thinking about it again. I think that was the champ at Featherstick. Because it's really a useful little blade. But these are the ones I think are the strongest. These, these knives right here, the, the 4 Max, the SR1, and the AD10. I think these are the strongest knives that Cold Steel makes. And I know, I know, I know the um, the all aluminum, the 70, 75 aluminum, or is it 6061? I think it's 7075 aluminum that they use in the, 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 the polish of spotters. That might be the strongest knife. That might actually be the strongest knife. I think that's the one that they did the um, 750 pounds on. And it, it wasn't deformed or anything. So it could have held a lot more weight than that. But that might be the strongest one because it's got, you know, the 75, 75 aluminum, you know, um, the liners and the, the liners and the bolsters are all one piece. They're milled, they're milled uh, aluminum. The 7075 aluminum is like super strong, like titanium. The only thing that's stronger than 7075 aluminum, I think it's the titanium. And then they got different grades of titanium too. Titanium has aluminum in it. It's not tight. When you see something that says titanium, they'll talk about like it's a AL4. I think it's a, I don't know if that means four parts aluminum or what, or 4% aluminum. And then you got like the five AL. I, I think that might be five parts or 5% aluminum. I think that's what that means. But I know they have a little bit of aluminum in them. They're not pure titanium. Because I think they have to put aluminum in them to, to make it, you know, not be so brittle or something. I, I'm, not, I'm not, there's a reason for it. I read it one time, but I can't remember. But anyway, people, that's it for today. You got anything you want to say, Juno? You got anything you want to say? Huh? You want to say meow? You want to say meow to everybody? That's my girl. That's my buddy. That's my buddy, Juno. That's my buddy, Juno. You've been Grandpa's buddy for 15 years, huh? Mm-hmm. You know Grandpa better than anybody, huh? <laughs> All right, people. Peace out. Stiletto. That's it, sweetie. That's that video. Peace.